The title of my presentation is Machine Learning in Healthcare Opportunities and Challenges. As background, uh, we all know that the healthcare expenditure is increasing rapidly. Uh, here on the x-axis we see a year, and on the y-axis we see the annual spending in healthcare in, in uh, millions of euros. And the reasons for this increase include uh, the population growing older and requiring more care, as well as uh, new treatments that are being developed that are often more efficient, but then may also be more costly. In Finland, we try to tackle this uh, uh, increase in cost by healthcare reform, where the goal is to organize our healthcare such that regions will organize healthcare instead of municipalities as it is nowadays. And the hope is that these larger regions will then be able to organize healthcare more efficiently, leading to cost savings in the future. Another thing that is often mentioned as, as a solution is digitalization. Uh, and artificial intelligence. But of course, those techniques still need to be developed, and that's, that's what this talk is mostly about. Uh, I will first go through uh, certain examples of opportunities that machine learning and artificial intelligence offer for uh, making healthcare more efficient, and in the end, I will discuss some challenges also. The first opportunity is uh, diagnostic support. Uh, in healthcare, we have many types of imaging data. Here we see uh, an X-ray of a patient who has been classified by a machine learning model as having uh, COVID-19. And uh, on the right, we have uh, this heat map showing with uh, red color the regions of the, uh, of the lung of this, uh, of this patient uh, that are responsible for this classification as having COVID-19. Uh, there are many types of imaging data in healthcare. Uh, so we have these x-rays, but we have also pathology images, we have brain imaging, uh, and of course it doesn't have to be imaging, it can be lab results, it can be genetic data, all kinds of uh, measurements and data that can help the doctor make better diagnosis. Of course, the goal is not to replace the doctor, but hopefully help the doctor uh, maybe solve the easy cases and, and then free time for doctor to focus on the more difficult cases. Another example where artificial intelligence can be useful is all types of self-care. This is an uh, example of a project we have ongoing with um, Helsinki Uusima Hospital District, HUS. Uh, uh, it's about uh, developing a treatment for uh, women who have gestational diabetes. Gestational diabetes is a diabetes that uh, women ha may have during pregnancy. And the basis of the solution is that we, have, uh, we are measuring the blood glucose continuously as well as physical activity and uh, diet and all kinds of information. And then th that information is collected into an app and then different types of um, uh, predictions can be shown uh, or different kinds of recommendations can be shown to the patient. Of course, I might emphasize that this is just like a sketch of the app. The real app looks co quite different, and it's been developed in collaboration with uh, user interface designers, psychologists, medical doctors, nurses, and, and also taking feedback from the, from the patients into account all the time. There are many types of routine tasks that might be automated using machine learning and artificial intelligence. Um, here we see a clinical document, some free text notes that it, it's not uh, uh, central what, what the text exactly is saying, but uh, all types of uh, documents that are produced when, when patients visit hospital, for example. And here we've developed a so-called medical coding model. It's a neural network that can assign to such uh, free text notes some uh, numerical diagnosis codes, uh, so this ICD code as well as the CCS code, they are just like numbers for different diagnoses, which can then be extracted automatically from such free text clinical notes. Uh, of course, we might extract other useful information from such uh, clinical notes, not only diagnosis. One uh, master's thesis that I was supervising recently uh, was uh, developing a model that can extract the smoking status of a patient. Uh, and the goal eventually was to do medical research where um, the goal is to study efficiency of certain treatments with, which might be affected by whether the patient is smoking or not. And previously, when somebody wanted to do such studies, uh, some 
actually had to go manually through all, the, all these medical documents and read them to figure out whether the patient was smoking or not. But now we can automatically extract that information and it's of course extremely helpful. Uh, and this kind of routine task you might have also in, in administration in hospitals, uh, like, like for billing purposes or something like that. This figure is showing uh, a snapshot of different data sets or registers that are available at the Finnish Institute for Health and Welfare, so the THL. Here on the x-axis we have um, the age of an individual and on the y-axis we have different types of healthcare data or, or data in general. And then each of these blue boxes in the figure is one register or one data set. And then some of these data sets are specific to individuals of certain age, uh, like good examples are well baby clinic or school health surveys. But then here in the middle, we have also these general health registers like primary healthcare visits. So every time somebody visits a healthcare center in, in Finland, then something will be recorded, like the outcome of the visit will be recorded in these registers. On the very top we have this, uh, with red, red color we, we have this disease, it can be mental health, uh, it can be diabetes, obesity, whatever. And then uh, of course that kind of diseases often evolve quite slowly, so you might have some early signs uh, early on and then, then it, the, the disease develops into an advanced state and, and some complications that may be costly to treat in the end. And, um, of course, it's, it's beneficial to try to treat the, the disease as early as possible. And, and for this we need, uh, and, and using these data we can, predict, uh, we can build prediction models uh, then to predict in advance uh, like development of a disease. Uh, such prediction models are also very important uh, for, for governmental purposes. So I already mentioned this healthcare reform and in Finland the goal is to allocate funding to the re regions based on the predicted amount of certain diseases in a given region. Uh, and so uh, if there are more cancers predicted to happen in a certain region, then more money is allocated accordingly. And of course, then it's very important that these prediction models are accurate as possible so that, that the funding gets allocated uh, efficiently and, and fairly between the regions. This is an example uh, of, of uh, how machine learning and artificial intelligence can help in designing new treatments. This is from a study where we studied this uh, MRSA, MRSA, which is a hospital bacterium. And uh, here we, we had data about patients, patients who, who were colonized by MRSA, so they were carriers of MRSA. And then uh, here on the right side of the figure, we have these uh, graphs. On the x-axis is the time, and on the y-axis is the MRSA carriage probability. And then we see that uh, in this group where no treatment on top of the standard care was, was uh, used, we see that the MRSA carriage probability decreased quite slowly. So, so these patients, somehow they get rid of MRSA over time, but it happens very slowly. Whereas if, if full protocol, which consists of multiple treatments applied on different body sites, uh, if, if that is applied, then we see this full protocol on the very right, the, the MRSA carriage probability drops very rapidly. And now with our probabilistic model, we can then uh, uh, estimate the efficiency of any combinations of, of these individual treatments. For example, in the middle, we have treatment just applied on the nares, and then uh, we see it like how, how efficient that would be. As a byproduct of this analysis on the left, we have this graph between body sites. So they are the sites on which treatments are applied. And we, we get these interactions between, between different body sites. And understanding of these interactions also helps us to develop more efficient treatment combinations so that, uh, that the patients would get rid of this MRSA more, more rapidly. That was just some snapshot of, of the opportunities that machine learning has in healthcare. Of course, it's very biased towards my own research. Um, other opportunities, so you might have something like automated monitoring of, of the elderly when they are alone at home 
or, or just some, uh, some management de decision tools to support m hospital managers, for example. So there are very many opportunities that I didn't cover here. But uh, now to the other part of my talk, these challenges. Um, so what, what do we need, need from a machine learning model so that we can actually apply it in, in healthcare? First of all, we need to be able to quantify uncertainty. It's very important that when, when, when we have a machine learning model and it makes some prediction that we actually can say whether that's a certain prediction or uncertain prediction so that we only, only uh, take, can take action based on those, those predictions that we think are, are, are credible. Another challenge is, is causality, understanding causality. Here on the right we have this uh, figure that illustrates the situation where you have some treatment T and some outcome of a, pa a patient outcome Y. And we would like to learn how this treatment affects the outcome, but then you have some, some background variables X, X that might affect both the treatment and the outcome. Uh, this, this, in practice, this kind of situation might be, for example, if we have COVID-19 patients and some are more severely ill uh, than others, and those who are more severely ill are treated by a different treatment than those who are uh, less severely ill. And then, of course, the outcome of these patients all, also is, is different. And so in this way, this, uh, this uh, uh, background variables might cause misleading conclusions about the efficiency of treatments if, if we don't take those properly into account. Privacy is a central challenge. Um, of course, data, these data are very sensitive and they must be analyzed in a secure environment. Uh, and uh, things like anonymization and pseudonymization are very important. Transparency means that when we get a prediction from a machine learning model, uh, it's not just enough that the machine learning model says that, okay, this individual will, is likely to develop diabetes in, in next five years or something like that. But we also want to understand what's, what's happening. Why, why is this machine learning giving, giving such a prediction? And uh, one example of such uh, transparency was on the first slide, we had these uh, x-rays of, of the lungs of COVID-19 patients, and then, the, then, uh, then we were highlighting the regions that the machine learning thought are kind of uh, important for, for a certain classification result, so that somebody might, like the doctor might, for example, go and check, okay, this makes sense. Uh, so that's very important for, 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 for this application field in practice. Finally, I have this fairness here. Uh, it means that when we have a machine learning model, we all always need some training data to train the model to make predictions. And the training data is collected from some population. And if the training data isn't representative of the whole population, it might be that you have some minority groups in the population, and then, uh, then your machine learning model is, is actually not accurate for that minority group. And uh, this is something that's very important for those who develop these methods to keep in mind all the time uh, and then try to tackle or address these problems as much as possible. Uh, because in the end, we want these techniques to be helpful, equally to all, all uh, the whole population. That's all. Thank you for listening. <laughs>